Hey everyone, I'm John Sisson and today we're doing a quick tutorial on how to do Wi-Fi tethering with your Sony camera. Alright, so before we get started, this feature is only available on select Sony camera models. So at the moment there are only four that can do it. So you've got the A7R Mark IV, the A7S III, the A9 Mark II, and most recently, the A7C. So if you have another Sony camera that comes out in the future, or if you would just want to check what features are available, there is a link that I will leave down below to let you know what features are available with that Sony camera app, which is Imaging Edge. Now that we got that out of the way, wireless tethering actually allows you to transfer photos from your camera to the computer through Wi-Fi as you take the photos. So that's going to be very helpful if you're on shoots or in location, or if you don't want a whole bunch of cables going around and could potentially be a trip hazard for anyone that's walking around. So also the cool thing about this is that you can actually have a live view setting of what the actual camera is seeing in real time on your computer or a desktop. There are two things that are essential to making this work. Of course, one of the things is a supported camera device, which is the A7C that I have in my hand. And of course, a computer, which I have behind me. I'm gonna show you what you need first on your computer, which program to get. And I will also link that down below as well. So let's get started. Just a quick note, while I am using the Sony A7C, the menu and navigating through it may be slightly different from the camera that you are actually using. First thing you need to do is go to your computer and go to the Imaging Edge website for Sony. I will leave a link in the description for you down below so you can quickly access that. Once you're there, select your operating system. For myself, I'm using a Mac. Once that is downloaded, install the program by following the prompts and your computer will be ready to go. Now, grab your camera and hit the menu button and navigate to network. Go to control with smartphone and turn it off. This is extremely important, otherwise it won't work. After that, go to PC remote function and select PC remote. You'll want to turn it on. Then go to PC remote connection method and select Wi-Fi direct. Wi-Fi direct will allow the camera and the computer to talk directly to each other without using an access point. But if you prefer to use an access point, that is another way as well. You'll most likely need to input another password for the network that you want to access to talk through. For this demo, we'll be looking at Wi-Fi Direct. And since we're here, you can change a few settings that may make your workflow a lot easier. For example, saving the images to either the PC, camera or both, saving in RAW and JPEG or just one or the other. And the last, whether you want to save the original or a two megapixel file onto your computer. My tip, select save the image on the PC and camera and select PC save image size as two megapixels. That way, the photos are transferred quickly to your computer with less lag and you have the original file sizes on your camera and you don't have to deal with a full hard drive later on, especially if you're using the A7R4. Now once that is done, you will need to connect your camera to your computer through Wi-Fi. So head over to Wi-Fi Direct Info so you know what the name of your camera and password will be and add the camera's network to your computer's Wi-Fi settings. After that, click remote from the Imaging Edge folder and your camera name should pop up on the list. Once you have double clicked that, there will be a whole bunch of settings that you can change on the computer. You should now be able to see what your camera is looking at. Right now the camera is pointed at me, but you can also see the controls on the side for you to adjust when taking a photo. While you are using this mode, just be aware you won't be able to see the autofocusing tracking points on your computer, but rather the camera instead. So I've got my camera here, and that's turned on, and it's actually tracking me. So you can actually see that I am connected to the computer. And just to show you how quick it is, if I press the shutter button right there, it's actually pretty instantaneous. After you take a photo, it will go to viewer. And if I want to go back to remote, I just click that thing on the top to R and then I'm back shooting. So I won't go through all of this uh, right now. It is in another video. So if you want to check that out, you can take a look in the description down below or in the top right hand corner of this video and I'll have it up. 
but just to quickly show you, I am getting a live view feed of what the camera is actually seeing. So that's actually pretty cool. And I am getting very minimal lag, so that's great to see. Just to let you know as well, if I am, or if you do want to record a video, you are not going to get the video saved onto the computer. It will actually just be on the memory card. So just to let you know that as well. But that's about it. Let's head back to the video. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that little tutorial on how to use wireless tethering for your Sony camera. It is actually a fun thing to use and could be quite helpful and handy when you're out on location or, or in the studio. This is um, pretty cool, I will say. There is a bit of lag, but you know, if you are transferring high resolution files, like if you are using an A7R4 and transferring those massive raw files or a JPEG, it can take a bit of time for it to actually go through the camera to your computer. But if you have something like an A7 or, or an A7C, it wouldn't take that long, but there is just a little bit of delay time transferring from the camera to the computer. And there could also be a bit of a delay when you are trying to do live view from the camera to the computer. And also it's not as reliable in some ways because there may be a lot of network interruptions as well. So it's not the most reliable, but it can have a lot of benefits when you are shooting um, from your camera and instantly wanting to have it on a computer. So if you have any more questions, uh, please feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you use this app or program, let me know what you think of it. And remember to like this video if you found it helpful and subscribe to my channel for more Sony camera lens reviews and tutorials. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram for more sample photos and photo updates. And don't forget to take a look in the description down below for the links to the various websites and more information about the Imaging Edge program. Now until then, happy shooting and thanks for watching.